Hello everybody. Today I'll be discussing a topic that has changed the way I practice dermatology. I first heard about it when I attended the American Academy of Dermatology annual meeting in 2016. It was based on this New England Journal of Medicine article that was published a year earlier and was about the use of oral nicotinamide to prevent skin cancers, otherwise called the ONTRAC study. We all know that non-melanoma skin cancers such as basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinomas are caused principally by ultraviolet radiation. In this study, nic nicotinamide was shown to protect against UV damage and reduce the rate of new pre-malignant actinic damage. This was a phase 3 double-blind controlled trial. So what is nicotinamide? It's a water-soluble form of vitamin B3, niacin, and is a semi-essential vitamin. It is derived from exogenous and endogenous sources. A diet that includes meat, fish, eggs, nuts, and vegetables may provide adequate intake. After ingestion, it is rapidly absorbed in the gut and is then distributed to tissues with a very high turnover, like the skin. Nicotinamide is responsible for cellular energy metabolism and it is linked to cellular survival and death. Nicotinamide has been used for many years in the treatment of several chronic inflammatory dermatoses like rosacea, acne and femphigoid. However, its use in the chemo pre prevention of skin cancers is more recent. So how does it work in skin cancer? We know that ultraviolet exposure is an exogenous insult that damages cellular DNA and nicotinamide improves the DNA repair mechanism of these UV damaged cells. Ultraviolet B irradiation also interferes with the skin immune system and nicotinamide reduces this immunosuppression as well. Many studies suggest that ultraviolet radiation increases the levels of skin inflammation and nicotinamide also interferes with this. So overall, three excellent mechanisms of action. Going back to the Antrax study, 386 participants with at least two non-melanoma skin cancers over five years received either nicotinamide 500 mg twice a day or placebo for 12 months. The patients were evaluated by dermatologists at three monthly intervals for 18 months. The results were impressive considering that this is just a vitamin tablet. There was a reduction of basal cell carcinomas by 20% and new squamous cell carcinomas by 30%. The number of actinic keratoses was 13% lower in the nicotinamide group compared to placebo group at 12 months as seen in the graph on the right. Overall, at 12 months, the rate of new non-melanoma skin cancers was lower by 23%. In other clinical studies, topical nicotinamide improved fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmented spots, red blotchiness, yellowish discoloration of the skin, as well as improving elasticity. And I'm sure this is something which will be very helpful and most of our patients will appreciate this. There are controversies too. Firstly, the efficacy seems to rapidly diminish post-treatment, so we may need to continue with this indefinitely. Stephen Gilmore from the Skin and Cancer Foundation in Melbourne also cast some doubts on the statistical methods used in the NEGM paper. He feels that the achieved results are not totally reproducible. In fact, when the efficacy of old nicotinamide for the prevention of skin cancers in immunocompromised renal transplant patients were analyzed, it showed no absolute differences between the nicotinamide and the placebo group for non-melanoma skin cancer rates. So some practical points. Firstly, the dose of nicotinamide, as already mentioned, is 500 milligrams twice a day. Secondly, there is a possible interaction with oral carbamazepin. So if there is a person who's already on it, it may be best to avoid it because of this potential interaction. Next, those who've had greater sun damage in the past, that is if they've had more than two non-melanoma skin cancers, they seem to respond more effectively to nicotinamide than those with lower numbers of actinic damage or non-melanoma skin cancers. And then in the UK, it's better to get it online because many of the high street pharmacies 
do not stock it. Nicotinamide also seems to reduce the incidence of new superficial basal cell carcinomas better than other subtypes, whereas it has a relatively constant effect on the different types of squamous cell carcinomas. Please note that nicotinamide does not act as a sunscreen. It does not prevent sunburns. And as we've already mentioned, the chemopreventive effects of nicotinamide are lost soon after discontinuation. You say usually about six months. So if you do want it to carry on the effects, you need to carry on with it indefinitely. Nicotinamide is generally excellent, has an excellent safety profile and it is very well tolerated even at high doses of up to three grams a day. Previously, it has had vasodilatory effects such as flushing, hypotension, itch and headache. But this has actually been attributed to the nicotinic acid that was present in earlier formulations of this vitamin. With the newer preparations, you're unlikely to get any of these side effects. No hematological or biochemical changes were noted in any of the studies. So what did I learn from this review? Firstly, I think we need to read medical journals, not just the dermatological literature. In fact, most of the groundbreaking dermatological pearls are published in the NEJM and Lancet, not the skin journals. Next, I think it can be used not for those just with two BCCs or more, as suggested in the NEJM article, but can also be recommended in those with earlier sun damage. In the last few months, I've started suggesting it to patients with mild to moderate actinic keratoses or even their first BCCs along with the usual sun protective measures. And yes, as the title suggests, this vitamin does seem to prevent skin cancers. Thank you.